Pre-built computer systems often come designed for particular tasks at hand, and laptops are no exception to this. But for the budget-minded YouTuber like myself, having a dedicated video editing workstation could set you back a substantial amount of money. But do you really need the most powerful video editing workstation in order to edit full HD video in 2019? The answer? Not as much as you think. Oh, what's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and this is the Lenovo W540. This workstation packs more than enough power to edit full HD video and you won't believe how much I paid for it. So how did this laptop take the number one spot? Let's find out. This Lenovo W540 may look like an old briefcase laptop of the 80s and 90s, but there is some substantial power for this aging beast. First feature I want to point out was the backlit keys, which come in two modes, bright and brighter. I like this feature because I sometimes work in the dark and can't always see the keyboard. The keys are chiclet style, tactile and responsive and have decent actuation. The workstation weighs about 5.8 pounds and its form factor is slightly on the bulky side compared to your typical MacBook Airs and Ultrabooks. But the I.O. on both sides is plentiful, including Thunderbolt support, VGA port, USB 2, 3, and a card reader with expansion port and headphone jack. The right side includes an optical drive, USB 3, USB 2, and a Kensington lock. On the back, it's more of a simple layout, Ethernet, battery, and power connector. ThinkPads are known for being built like tanks, and this workhorse utilizes glass fiber reinforced plastic on the outside and a magnesium skeleton on the inside to guard against drops. Let's flip the laptop over and take a look at the bottom. The first thing you might notice is the docking station port. It's a great feature for power users, but because I travel a lot, I've never really used it. The battery is a 5200 milliamp hour battery, but I don't normally run this laptop without its beefy 1.2 pound power brick. Battery life is terrible at less than six hours for me, but the aging cells in the battery pack are undoubtedly responsible for the reduced battery life. The only real time to turn on the power saver mode is never. This laptop comes with eight gigabytes of DDR3L RAM, but it supports up to 32 gigs of RAM in dual channel. And that's what was loaded in there when I bought it. Many video editing programs like Adobe Premiere Pro really benefit from more RAM and combined with a faster processor allow for fast scrubbing through the footage without stutters or skipping. The W540 comes stock with a 250GB solid state drive, but this one was replaced with the 240GB Intel 730 series SSD. There's also an Intel 7260AC wireless card with 802.11bgn AC support for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless connectivity, but also an extra M.2 slot that I use with a second solid state drive as a video capture drive. This allows me to have access to many gigabytes of footage without bogging down the operating system. The screen is a 15.5 inch display at 1920 by 1080 resolution, although some versions of the system go up to 2880 by 1620. This is known as a 3K display. It's bright, vibrant, and with the help of a color calorimeter, could potentially compete with the MacBook Pro's Retina display at this resolution. The system comes with Windows 8.1 Pro, but a quick wipe and update to Windows 10 fix that. Now we're getting into the guts of this system. It's a fourth generation Intel Haswell Core i7-4800MQ with a base clock of 2.7 GHz and a max turbo frequency of 3.7, which is not particularly great for applications that rely on clock speed more than cores. Speaking of cores, there's four of them and hyper-threading support for up to eight threads. This is good news because video editing software supports and even encourages hyper-threading and benefits more from the multi-core support than it does from core clock frequency. All right, now we come to the part of the video where things became a little bit troublesome. Now the Lenovo W540 comes with an NVIDIA Quadro K1100M graphics card as opposed to the NVIDIA GeForce graphics cards that come with traditional gaming systems, the NVIDIA Quadro card is designed around engineers and graphics professionals. But can it run Crisis? I'm not actually gonna run Crisis. Can it run Crisis is actually an expression used to critique the hardware of a gaming system by its ability to perform running a very graphic intensive PC title called Crisis. But the answer is probably not. 
The two gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM is probably not gonna be enough for most games. In fact, the K1100M is more closely aligned with the GeForce GT 740M, which would run most 2013 titles at medium settings, including World of Warcraft. Gosh, World of Warcraft. There's a title you haven't heard in a while. But I know you're not gonna believe me unless I show you. I feel like it's kind of ridiculous that I should have to benchmark a workstation, but I wanna to prove to you that this computer is in fact a workstation, not a gaming PC. But anyway, if you guys are ready for some laughs and some cringy moments, well, let's get it over with. So I compared this laptop to my current desktop, which is a respectable Skylake 6700K processor, an NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics card, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a SATA 3 SSD. First up on our list is Assassin's Creed Origins. It was recorded at 1080p with very low settings, DirectX 11, and everything else turned off. The desktop pulls ahead at 91 frames per second, while the Lenovo W540 chugs along ever so slightly at 13 frames a second. Next is Far Cry 5, again recorded at 1080p, low settings and everything off. The desktop pulls ahead, very reminiscent of Assassin's Creed Origin, to about 86 to 87 frames, while the Lenovo W540 really gives us something to cry about. Five to eight frames per second. You could count the number of frames on your hands. It was terrible. It barely ran. Next is Grand Theft Auto V. It's a more forgiving game on the graphics side. It was recorded at 1080p, DirectX 11 with V-Sync off. The desktop takes a commanding lead at 155 to 157 frames, while the Lenovo W540 skips along at between 16 and 17 frames. And last, I went with an older title, Metro Last Light Redux. This one was recorded at 1080p medium settings and everything off. The desktop, again, taking a commanding lead at 156 frames per second, while the Lenovo W540 still struggling, even with an older title, 22 frames a second. This just goes to show you that Quadro graphics cards were not designed for gaming. In fact, uh, the lower VRAM probably had a lot to do with it. Now let's talk about price. Now originally this laptop sold for between $1,300 and $2,500 in 2014, depending on the configuration. I picked this one up on eBoy for $350. It would be difficult to build a comparable desktop workstation at this price point. Granted, this is a used system, so it is prone to failures in the future, and support for these powerhouses of yesteryear are all but gone. But for the multi-threaded processor, beautiful display, and a fast SSD built in a rugged chassis, look no further than the look no further than the Lenovo W540 for all of your budget video editing needs. In fact, many of the videos on my YouTube channel have been edited and rendered on this very laptop, including the intro to the LCD side panel mod version 2.0, which was created in Adobe After Effects. If you're a budget conscious video content creator or just getting started on YouTube, this could be the system for you. Thank you so much for checking out this video and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the modern nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya.